so I have a typo here. This part I'm highlighting is correct. But this guy right here, this is a typo. That's equal to zero. So we should fix that. And these, these two are important limits. So this one, this one we saw before. We saw it on the 1.5 worksheet. Just as a quick reminder. We did it right here. I had said a long time ago that limit is x goes to zero of sine x over x equal to one. That's a big deal for this class. We're just replacing x with theta. So I hope you can see that's the same thing. This one is um, used to prove derivative of the sine theta and cosine theta. Okay. So you're supposed to assume that you know that that's true. Now, I want to leverage these two identities to solve some problems. So if you look at this identity over here and then you look at example 10, I am not in a position to use this identity yet. I really wish the bottom looked just slightly different. Does anyone know what I wish that the bottom was so that I could use this identity? Can anyone see what I want the bottom to be? That's right, Audrey. I want the bottom to be 2x. So I would love to be able to just put a two here. That way, the two X and the two X are both theta. But am I allowed to just put a two wherever I want to? I can't do that, that's illegal. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So if I'm gonna multiply the bottom by two, I also have to multiply the top by two. Then I'm just multiplying by one. Can everybody see that? Now, I hope you guys can see, I have the limit as x goes to zero, sine of two x over two x times two. This, did you guys hear my wife sneezing? That's like, anyways, never mind. She Did you hear her? I mean, it's so loud. It, yeah, I, I, thought thought you, like, I thought you had a chicken. <laughs> I'm gonna tell her you said that. Um, anyways, this part goes to one using the identity, you have times two, and then you get an answer of two, okay? So that's how we do that one. The whole goal is to just manipulate the situation so that uh, you can get the, uh, the two there. I mean, you could get the trig identity there. So let's look at an example 11 next. If I look at example 11, I have the limit as x goes to zero, I have sine of x squared. What would I love for the bottom to be? What would I love for the bottom to be? X squared is right, Joseph. So I can get X squared by multiplying top and bottom by X. I hope you guys can see that. So if I multiply top and bottom by X, then the bottom there is gonna be X squared. So this becomes the limit as X goes to zero, sine of X squared divided by X squared times X. And um, really I can split that into the limit as X goes to zero sine of X squared over X squared times the limit as X goes to zero of X. And the first part's going to one and the second part is going to zero and one times zero is equal to zero. So that's gonna be my second one. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Now, before we do example 12, I wanna ask you guys a question. If I know that this identity here is true, and my question for you is, what is the limit as theta goes to zero of theta over sine theta? Does anyone have any guesses as to what that might be equal to? Knowing this, can you tell me what this is equal to? Just take a guess. What would you guess this is equal to? Oh, I was thinking you would guess one, Mario, not negative one. Um, the reason why I, th I thought you were going to guess one is because we're flipping the left hand side, right? So if we invert the left hand side, it feels like we should invert the right hand side as well. But one over one is just one. Does that make sense? So this is just one over one, which is just one. Okay. So I have a question for yeah, um, limit x goes to zero x. We're just plugging in the zero, right? That's why it's zero. Correct. Okay, Definitely, yes. Okay. So now let me do example 12. Keep in mind what I just said up there. So this is going to be the limit as x goes to zero. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate this into two pieces. On one piece, I'm going to have sine of 3x, that's the denominator. I'm just going to move the 2x to the side like this. Now, what would I love to put up here? What do you want this to be? Oh. Um, do you see how over here I have sine theta? I have theta over sine theta, and that's still equal to one. So what I really want is I want this top part here to be theta. But in this case, my theta is 3x. So I want this to be a 3x. That way I can use this identity right here. Does that make sense? Because then this angle matches this angle. But I can't just write a 3x up here. I mean, you can't just multiply by whatever you want. Whatever you do the top, you have to do the bottom. So I'm going to introduce a 3x and a 3x. Maybe I should have the 3x in red or something. Maybe that makes it clear. Maybe I should have a, a 2 and a 2 here, just to make it obvious. Maybe I should have um, an x and an x there. Just so you can see, I'm multiplying top and bottom by one, right? Um, then what do we have? Well, this is the limit as x goes to zero of 3x over sine 3x times the limit as x goes to zero. This is 2x over 3x. But I hope you guys can see that the X's here cancel out, and this part goes to one. So in the end, we're just going to have one times two thirds, which is equal to two thirds. Does that make sense for everybody? All right. Um, for the last part, we're going to take the limit as theta goes to zero. And we're going to break this up into two pieces. I'm going to write one piece as cosine of theta minus one. I'm going to write the other piece as sine of theta like this. So my question for you is, what would I love for this bottom part here to be? You want that to be a theta so that I can use this identity. So I'm going to put in a theta here. 
can I just write theta at the bottom whenever I want to? I cannot. Whenever I do the bottom, I have to do the top. So I must put a theta up here. Okay. But now we can just write this as the limit as theta goes to zero, cosine of theta minus one over theta times the limit as theta goes to zero, theta over sine theta. And we know what each of those limits are. The first one, the limit is zero. And the second one, the limit's one. Zero times one is zero. So that's what we get. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right, we have four minutes left. Let's just do one pro practice problem at the bottom. I will post these notes to Canvas, so don't worry if you didn't get it all done. Why don't you guys try five and six? Or just five, I guess. And I'll do them in two minutes, so. Give that a shot. All right, folks, I don't think I gave you enough time, but I only have two minutes. I would love to have a pi x on the bottom. I can't just write a pi x on the bottom. I also have to multiply by pi on top. So when I do that, this whole thing right here is going to go to one. I'm going to multiply by pi. So your final answer is going to be pi. For the next one, I would love for the bottom here to be 2x. I can't just write a 2x on the bottom. I also have to write one on the top. So we to 2x over there. Oh, I wonder where that in red. Oops. So I multiply top and bottom by 2x. For this guy, I would love to have a 5x up top here. So I'm going to put 5x. But I can't just put a 5x on top. I also have to put a 5x on the bottom like this. So what do we have happening? This part is going to one. This part is also going to one. The x's cancel here. So what we're really going to get is we're going to get one times one times two fifths. That's just equal to two fifths. And that's it.